Tonight on Life on the Rock, we're talking with Mark Wahlberg. We'll reflect on the movie Father Stu and much more. Welcome to Life on the Rock. We have a special show for you tonight. We're doing an hour show on a new movie coming out called Father Stu. I wanted to say from the beginning, it's not a, a movie for the entire family. It has some uh, rough language, it's got some rough humor, but it's showing a conversion story of a man that becomes a priest. And he had a disease that mimics ALS, mm -hmm. and he slowly becomes paralyzed uh, you know, as a priest, his life as a priest. Most of the movie's about his conversion, but I guess what I was struck by, he died in 2014, was the conversion, what he had to say, and it's in the movie, things he had to say about suffering and the cross, you know, God's forgiveness and strength that we draw from him, that it was very moving. Yeah, him. and it was new because we were talking about Father Stu, but whenever I first heard it, it was Father Who kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But just to learn about his life, his background, the transformation that God used him to bring so many closer to God. Right. And it seems unlikely, but God works in very mysterious ways. And that was just something that really hit me, was just seeing the transformation of a soul, a renewal, a new life, just kind of just birth into him. And that is just an, a really a miraculous thing to, to see, because it is a supernatural, uh, just a phenomenon. Right, it's a big complete change in yeah. his life. And so tonight we're going to interview Mark Wahlberg. We interview uh, the writer, director. We interview a priest that knew Father Stu very well. We interview Father Stu's father. So mm. this is about Father Stu Long, this uh, heroic priest that lived a life of heroic charity, talking about the film about his life. And we're going to roll this trailer now for you to enjoy. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg. I am so excited to share with you the trailer for my new movie, Father Stu. I found his story to be so inspiring that I knew I had to find a way to bring it to the big screen. Here's the trailer to Father Stu. I figured it out. Yeah, seventh time's a charm. I'm being an actor. Oh, God. You don't belong with those LA folks. They're a bunch of fascist hippies. What brings you here? And I figured no better place to be discovered than the supermarket. Hey, did I see you on a television series? You do movies? You don't work in the entertainment industry at all? No, man. Do Bill know you're fussing with his truck? I'm a son. I'm just borrowing it. I reckon it's a few months worth of cleanups on aisle four to pay off a DUI impound. What can I get for you, miss? I got beef. I can see that. Hey! Hey! Let's not waste either of our time. I'm a Catholic. Why ain't that what confession's for? You can't date someone who isn't baptized. I thought you was gonna say Hispanic. Where's the water? I'll do it now. I know I'm not what you used to, but not what you deserve either. Life's gonna give you a gut full of reasons to be angry. You only need one to be grateful. Oh, shit. I think God saw something in you worth saving. But it's up to you to decide what you've got to offer. It's the place you told me you believed in me. I thought it makes sense being back here to do this. Your son is about to make a huge mistake. Well, I'm gonna be a priest. For Halloween. Mm. I'm praying for you, Bill. Don't you dare. You're violating my rights. There's a man going round taking names. We've all been wrong, and we've all done some wrong. But he came to forgive us. Everybody won't be treated all the same. There is no easy way to deliver this news. You have a progressive muscle disorder. The muscles weaken until they cease to function. Is there anything it doesn't mess with? Yeah, erectile function. I'm trying to be a priest, pal. The wise men will bow down before the throne. I won't know. I won't know. Why? Why? And at his feet, they'll cast their golden crown. Man don't lose when he gets knocked down, but when he won't get up. Ah, baby. There is concern amongst the diocese that your infirmity will render you unable to be a priest. Listen to the words long written down. What you guys get, one phone call a week in here? Who you gonna call, huh? 
When no one else gives a shit what you got to say, God does. When the man comes around. He ain't giving up on you. Don't you dare go giving up on yourself. Hear the trumpets, hear the pipers. One hundred million angels sing. Where are you going? Well, I gotta get your ass to church on time. Who are you here to visit, sir? Father Stu. You and everybody else. When the man comes around. I wish you can pray for an easy life. But the strength to endure a difficult one. Well, you can't say I never gave you nothing. Yeah, I skipped over thanking you. Went straight to the source. Exclusively in movie theaters. I want to ask you, uh, I know your hopes for the film and have a broader audience. It's got some grittiness to it. Talk about those hopes, like who in your mind, like kind of a target audience that you're really hoping to reach. I want to reach everybody. Mm -hmm. I, I think everybody's personally going through their own struggles. And I think this is a movie that can give, give some people some comfort and help them de in dealing with issues that they're facing, especially right now. Um, but you know, the, the, the goal initially was in sitting down and praying about what I would hope to have happen, you know, bringing people to church, the vocation, the priesthood. But now with the current times that we're living in, as you see so many more people struggling from all walks of life. And so I really want to try to reach as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. In your own personal faith, you're wanting to do good, wanting to help people. Is that like growing in your career? Do you feel that more powerfully? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I always knew there was some other plan other than my own in play and uh, just kind of trying to figure out um, how to recognize those things and how to um, execute in a way that he would want me to. So I think, um, you know, uh, from being plucked from obscurity and then uh, all the little things that have kind of, you know, just reignited. Uh, a spark in my faith and mm -hmm. what I should be doing and, and, and the direction is that I should just be focusing most of my attention and time uh, and efforts. So yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely happening. And do you think like a lot of people maybe that are outside the faith, they fear judgment, they fear condemnation. Is that part of what drew you to Father Stu's character? That he's very humble, he's suffering a lot himself. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, there were so many things that, that, that drew me to Stu's story um, and so many things that I found inspiring from Stu's life. But um, I think, uh, you know, that, that, that kind of bigger question of judgment, and there is a lot of judgment being passed on people that I think is, um, you know, not necessarily, uh, it's certainly not my responsibility to be passing judgment on anybody. Right. And so I, I, I have a bit of an issue with that because, right. you know, we know who the judge is supposed right, to be. Right. And we're all here kind of trying to figure it out and be the best versions yeah, of ourselves. Yeah. And, you know, we'll all have our, our time to speak our case or hopefully, right. if not, he knows what's going <laughs> on. So maybe you, don't get, maybe you don't get to say anything. As a priest watching the movie, what struck me a lot was his confessional work, the counseling, his witness of suffering, and the fruitfulness that came out of it. Um, in your own life, I know the priests, different priests have touched you. Was that part of your motivation too? To, I, I just, I celebrate showing a good face of the priesthood. Mm -hmm. And I think the film does it in a beautiful way. Yeah, that hasn't yeah. been done in quite some time. Right. I was talking about that earlier with mm -hmm. Father Bart. Um, you know, uh, I've met some remarkable men and women who have dedicated their lives to serving mm -hmm. God. And they have uh, touched my life in, in, in many ways. And, uh, lots of people along the way. So yes, of course, that, that is a, mm -hmm. a very important part of the story that I think right. people are really responding to. Yeah, and I, I appreciate it too, the respect you showed like in the confessional, like the, the role of the priest there and things, and you, you really showed it in a great light that I think is needed. You know, people are scared of that. They're scared of confessing sins and stuff. And I, oh, I gotta tell you people, it's such a beautiful feeling to lift those burdens off of your, your, <laughs> your, your chest and your shoulders. My God, you get a, you get a, you know, opportunity to really let go of those things and, uh, and hopefully start anew. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, so many of my friends and myself included, we get so excited when Hollywood uh, says something about the faith that's positive and strong. Um, so we all just want to thank you for doing that. And I, I think it, because we seem like we learn and take so much from our films in this country. They're so impressionable upon us. Uh, yeah. So I think that's just a great work that you're doing there. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, with it comes a lot of responsibility. And, you know, it's, I've talked about it in the past where I've always joked and said I hope God was a movie fan because <laughs> I think, you know, there's lots of different stories to be told. And it's also important how they're viewed and who they're viewed by. Um, but, you know, it, uh, it's so much more fulfilling when you're doing something that has real purpose and a real mm -hmm. meaning. And that can be um, helpful to some people um, in so many different ways. Yeah. And I think another point for me was just, hey, that conversion's possible. I mean, we don't have to stay in our sin. Mm -hmm. And your movie shows that with the reconciliation of the Father and things. Uh, people lose hope of that, of being better. Yeah. yeah. Well, we have to encourage them. We have to see the, the, the best in all the beautiful things in them mm -hmm. and point those things out and encourage people that it's never too late. I think um, one of the most beautiful responses is saying, you know, it just really shows that nobody's beyond redemption. Right. right. But God knows your heart. So if yeah. you're willing to yeah. and you want to change. Yeah, um, yeah and I, I think the Mel Gibson, the way he played the father, I thought it was at his best. You know, he can show that through his eyes or something, that tenderness. Mm -hmm. And that is such a deep theme about, there's something about imaging our very journey to God, too, I think, being reconciled with our father. Yeah. Well, I loved, I loved the relationship between uh, Stu and his dad and, and his dad having an opportunity to come back. And, and when I heard the stories of Bill um, coming back to take care of Stu the way that he did when he was diagnosed and literally feeding him, clothing him, mm -hmm. bathing him, uh, it was just such a, such a beautiful, beautiful yeah. story, you know, to see my dad kind of, you know, with his health deteriorate and decline. Um, and, and the same thing happened with my mom, so to kind of know how intimate a thing that is, yeah. to really be close to somebody when they're, when they're in that vulnerable estate. And your father had a big impact on you. I've heard you share on that. that yeah. His witness. And, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And one, of, one of my heroes. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, and, and the, you know, the thing I also enjoyed was you weren't afraid to throw some theology in there with, uh, with the, some of the homilies he gave and reflections, um, you know, talking about grace and, you know, maybe in a simpler language, but still talking about, like, God's help and we need his help and things and and just the, like, looking at the cross, you know, hey, remember the basics here. It seemed like, I felt like that was a theme in the movie, too, just the basics of Christianity. Hey, this is what's going on. Yeah. You know? And we can have faith in that. Yeah, God Absolutely. died for us. So. It gives us, yeah. it, I, it's the most beautiful gift you could ever give somebody. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and the, the hope that it gives you, the ability to cope with different things that are inevitable that you face in life, you know, when you're dealing with loss and, you know, things of that nature. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I uh, always felt like, you know, there was, there was hope. Yeah. And, and when I had that, then I felt like I could, I could do some pretty incredible things. But it's when I started doing good things through my faith and good things started to happen. And I, right. I, I certainly want to share that with as many people as yeah. possible. Was there some spiritual experiences in your life that you could share with us that was kind of turning point moments that you encountered God in some way or through somebody? Or? Well, you know, we all get on our hands and our knees when we're in trouble, <laughs> right? It's yeah. easy to turn. But yeah. then uh, the minute things are good, too, being able to get on my hands and my knees and express mm -hmm. that gratitude and know where that goodness came from and know why I was, I was granted that grace mm -hmm. and that opportunity and those blessings. So, um, yeah. but it's a, it's, it, it's a journey. It's yeah. a journey, you yeah. know, and I know we've all been tested at times, but again, yeah. I just continue to reiterate that good things happened to me when I started focusing on my faith. Yeah. And God only gave me things when I was ready to handle them. Uh, yeah. And I was, I was uh, deserving of them mm -hmm. in a way that I would respect them and nurture them. Mm -hmm. So. I like to ask people a lot when I interview them about like how they pray. Is there, because I've heard you're, you like to pray in the church and things. Mm -hmm. um, does that work for you just to go spend time in the church talking to the Lord or meditating? 
Yeah, yeah, whether I do it at church or at home, um, you know, kind of during the pandemic when churches were closed, mm-hmm. that was like, I, I didn't know what to do with myself mm-hmm. for a little while there. Yeah. But I, I'd always built this little prayer room in my house, so I had that, mm-hmm. that, that kind of little quiet place to go to. And that's just how I start my day, okay. you know, every day. Even if I'm, when I wake up and I just kind of, I'll just start praying a little bit while I'm laying there and then I get up and then I'm going to the prayer room. And then when I read my, uh, my really daily devotionals and scriptures, then I usually feel like, okay, I'm in a good space. And it starts mm-hmm. out with, you know, mm-hmm. expressing my gratitude. And then, of course, so many people that I've encountered along the way that I've met on my journey that have been, uh, whether it be people of the cloth that I've encountered or people that I've met, people mm-hmm. that are struggling, and all the people that I pray for, you know, it started to be more time consuming. Right. Um, right because I don't like to, I don't like to forget, and I don't like to miss out on the opportunity to pray for somebody else too, that might need it. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you, it was a nice, lovely yeah. conversation. Thank yeah. you, I'm glad you appreciated the movie. I did. Yeah, I did. thank you. I really enjoyed meeting mm-hmm. Mark Wahlberg. Uh, you know, he, he takes his faith uh, seriously. He's a very down-to-earth guy, very l- relatable, treated everybody kindly with respect, and uh, enjoyed talking to him. And this is a major motion picture. You know? yeah. Wahlberg's a, an A-list celebrity, yeah. right? So I was so excited to see this story. And you can't do a complete life on Father Stu. It shows his conversion, yeah. his ordination. It has the you know, theology in it. And to have that in a major motion picture in Hollywood, I was so excited yeah. about yeah. that. And one of the things that really struck me, I think, with the message is just being open to God to his inspirations, to his voice. Because God speaks to us in a thousand different ways each day. And a lot of times we don't, it's sometimes very difficult to put that in order. Right, right. But you see a soul, you're just out there doing whatever. Yeah, he's yeah, kind of a yeah. mess. Right. But, you know, he's, he's listening. Mm-hmm. He's listening to, you know, a voice of reason, his conscience. Yeah. And he's following that. You know, and while he may be troubled, uh, problematic, arrogant, or whatever, mm-hmm. he's being transformed. Right. God right. is transforming him, like right. the refiner's fire. Right. You know, and it's, yeah. it comes through suffering, and he had suffered a lot. You know, mm-hmm. he lost his brother when he was young, and th- those are difficult realities to have to address in life. Yeah, that one of my favorite things that Father Stu really said this, he talked about don't pray for an easy life, mm-hmm. pray for the grace to endure a difficult one. Yeah. And in the movie, you know, they, they have quotes of him talking about that suffering is a gift from God. Yeah. It's It's... We experience his love in the cross. So there's some great messages here. And, you know, Wahlberg's, Mark Wahlberg's charisma comes through. Yeah. He's fun to watch. Um, so there's a beautiful scene with the Blessed Mother. There I'm is. a sucker for that. So. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we hope you enjoy our next interview. Rosie, as a priest, I was really moved by the confessional scenes in the movie and the way they were done. Um, and I like, you know, the, earlier the character was rough with the priest. The priest kind of was still respectful. It, it just was shown with great dignity and respect from, I think, the directors. And, and, and even like the scene with Wahlberg and like you're looking at his eye, it was so intense. But can you talk about those scenes? Sure, yeah. I, um, you know, the first, first confessional scene is, is quite comedic, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's the character's first time mm-hmm. in confession and he doesn't know what he's doing in there. And... Um, I, I appreciated the way um, the actor who played Father Garcia, who was hearing his confession, um, played that. You know, he um, it was sort of the perfect blend of um, empathy for the guy and and with a sort of a dash of uh, am- amusement. You know, mm-hmm. I think um, I like would imagine. Yeah, yeah I, I I would imagine. Yeah. Um, as a priest, you you hear your your share of <laughs> of, right. of amusing things, right. Right. Um, but uh, but yes, compassion. You mm-hmm. know, I think he he from day one saw Stuart as as a a person who had the potential to um, to find God, and um, certainly I don't think he expected he'd become a priest. But um, all the the priests that I've known i've i've always been really moved by how you know even myself not having been raised catholic um we've had really interesting conversations about the faith and i've never felt 
judged um, or looked down upon in any way. Right. Um, and it was important to me to show a priest character in Father Garcia who, who represented that. Because um, I think, you know, priests get a bad rap. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> And when, when Father Stu is hearing the confession, mm -hmm. I just, I love the way, you know, he didn't, it wasn't the comedy, you know, he was, he was taken very seriously and it just conveyed, yeah. it's like the confession can be so dramatic for people and turning points. And I just, I love the way you conveyed that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I, I tried to, um, I tried to, to do it as I would imagine Stu would have, would have done. Um, right. Having not, had the good fortune of uh, yeah. of <laughs> being with him in a confessional <laughs> booth, I, I, um, I, I guessed. But I, you know, he's he's obviously a much different man mm -hmm. at that point in the film than when you first see him on the mm -hmm. other side of the confessional booth. And um, you know, it, it to me it was a it was a great opportunity in in writing that scene to show how he how he moved people and how he counseled them. And it was right. such a, a sort of subtle, but real, but effective way. Right, right. I, I thought a strong point too is the charisma of Mark Wahlberg coming through. You let that flow and he was likable and the, and the score it was really added. Can you talk about those choices and those scenes a little bit? Yeah, I mean, he, Mark has no shortage of charisma. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he, he really let it, let it right, fly right, in, in the film right. and inhabiting the character of Stu because that's, that's who he was by mm -hmm. all accounts um, that, that we'd heard. And um, he was, he was, one of the things that endeared me most to the character was that he had this sort of quixotic nature, you know, the, the kind of person who can, who can have been a boxer for many years and then sit there in the car with his mom and say, I'm going to be an actor. <laughs> it's like, right, right. you know, um, right. there's an element of absurdity to yeah, it. Right. And, uh, and I think, you know, everything from the, the editing style of the film to the, to the score and, and the, the needle drops, you know, I wanted it to reflect that, mm -hmm. that tone of the character, which is, um, you know, there's a bit of sort of, um, it's a very grounded film, but there's some kind of heightened reality, some stylization mm -hmm. to it that I think gives it that, um, you know, fun. Right. And what was the theme that most drew you to it, that really excited you about the project? Well, after having had the good fortune of speaking to Bill Long and, and a good friend of Stu's from the seminary, you know, I, I was, I was trying to figure out what my personal connection to the story would be and, and what my way into the story would be. And in it, I saw a guy who was really just sort of lost and searching for his purpose in life. And, you know, a guy who felt kind of hopeless and in the dark and who was searching for the light. And that's something that I've experienced that I think many people have experienced mm -hmm. and um, and it sort of it, it started from there and as I got to know Stu um, through kind of trying to mm -hmm. go on this journey with him when I was writing I just collected reasons to love him and admire him mm -hmm. and um, and there are there are countless now and I, I appreciate it too. You put like real content, like his preaching and some of his reflections in the movie Father Stu. And uh, I thought that was great. I was like, I can't believe this is in a Hollywood movie, you know? <laughs> you hear some talk about grace and what Jesus did for us and dying on the cross. And were those easy choices for you to make? Or? Well, um, no. I, uh, <laughs> I, I had to, I was deliberate in what I chose to, mm -hmm. to have him speak about. Um, right. You know, I figured I only had maybe two opportunities for homilies or, or right. sermons mm -hmm. in the film and, you know, what are you going to choose? Um, the first one, he speaks about forgiveness, which is something that he really grappled with and that his father obviously grappled with and, um, you know, and, and the later one is more about suffering and, and, um, and it reflects 
the outlook that he grew to have on suffering and the state of his infirmity and you know it, it, it really is one of the most inspirational things I think about Father Stu and about the film that you know he he says it in his last sermon his you know our though our outer nature is wasting away our inner nature is being renewed every day right. and um, and that's something I think we could all uh, use a little right. a little reminder right. of. Right. And your background, it felt like the movie has a, like the dialogue has, it's kind of surprising, but a certain literary quality to it. Do you, <laughs> you have a love of literature and things? Is yeah, it, absolutely. Yeah. I always thought I'd be a, a poet okay. or a novelist, and here I am <laughs> in uh, Hollywood. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> yeah. A good story is a good story. And yeah. it's, uh, and the theme of reconciliation with the father, it is just so powerful. I, that was one of the most moving parts of the movie, yeah. yeah. Just him coming back into life in a bigger way. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's, um, I think, one of the aspects that people will be able to relate to most. Yeah. You know. Well, thank you, Rosie, for chatting thank with you. us. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Father. It was a pleasure yeah. talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed uh, talking with Rosie, they call her. Um, and uh, you know the script's witty. It's got humor. It is a, a humor for adults and things. Um, you know Mark Wahlberg's charisma really comes through. And I I did think the confessional mm -hmm. scenes, you know, they were shown with uh, some respect yeah. and reverence. And even though you got a difficult penitent in one of the scenes, you know, it's still I like the way they show the priest. Mm -hmm. He handles it pastorally. Yeah. And I like the way they wrote theology in it. You know, this yeah. this idea about suffering and and just simple. Uh, Christianity, that Jesus died for us. You know, he died on the cross for us for the forgiveness of sins. You know, we are called to imitate him. We're called to love others, you know, and they make the point in the movie, you can't do that of your own strength. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's great theology to have in a, a, a beautiful film that's mm -hmm. got great music, great dialogue, A-list actors, you know, yeah. that's a big success. And for me, one of the things I did kind of stick out was seeing that contrast with Father Stu as a penitent when yeah. he was first going into confession, kind of what a mess that was. Right. But then seeing him later on as a father, as a father figure, yeah. yeah. And just seeing that whole, you know. But he didn't get there on the easy road. Mm -hmm. It was on a very narrow road. Yeah. You know, it was on the road that's carrying a cross. Right. You know, and he he had to deal with that. You know, right. he had to carry that cross. But again, it's not that he's carrying it alone. Mm -hmm. But he is. He recognized that there's that grace. You know, and that we have to live by this grace and that principle of love to be able to forgive, to allow ourselves to be forgiven in order to be transformed. Mm. And we also have an interview to show you with Father Bart Tolleson. Father Bart, uh, you were a classmate. You were ordained together with Father Stu in 2007, and you've been a, a close friend. How has it affected your priesthood, what you've seen in his life? When Stu was still alive, he never gave up. And there were times he had some, some dark days, but uh, he just kept pushing through as his body failed him, he kept going. And he just became a brighter light for Christ. And it's just to watch that happen with someone you know really well, is just, you know, it sticks with you and it challenges you too. I mean, I, it's like, if he can keep going, I can keep going. Right. So, and then afterwards, I think, just that, that legacy and that testimony, just it touches people's hearts. And to be able to share that with people right. is, is tremendous. And that he drew so many people to him. Usually you think of like, as a priest, I gotta be able to do X, Y, and Z so well. He's getting more sick and you know, can't move, can't do as much, but yet it seemed like more people are coming to him. The thing that was so strange is, so as a priest, you're in a church, people see you're a priest, they, they're, they're going to come up to you all the time. You know, can you hear my confession? I need to talk to you. Can I make an appointment? You know, what time is mass? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. So we're busy all the time. But when you go to a nursing home, a care center, you're not thinking, no one's going to know I'm here. I remember I saw Stu the, just a few days after he moved into Big Sky, and he goes, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I said, don't worry, it'll happen. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, slowly but surely, People got word that there's this incredible priest who is in a nursing home, but he hears your confession, and he's wise, and he's tough, and people are just drawn to him. So year by year, little by little, 
And soon, the last couple of years of his ministry, when he was around, there were lines in the nursing home hall waiting to see him. I mean, and it was serious. People like, you get your spot in line and don't let anyone in front of you because right. it takes some time to get in right. to see him. Right. And I think the fruit of, of suffering, right? we forget that a you know, priest is called to offer up sufferings for the penitents and things. And so I imagine that would be something behind his... I think also not just the suffering of his disease, but the suffering of basically encountering those people all day long, you know, and dealing with people in their crisis and their darkness and their trials. And Stu just gave it all to them. And I know at the end of the day, he was tired, just not from his disease, but just from all the ministry he would do. And he just said, I've got limited time. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I'll do whatever it takes. And there were people that helped him along the way, and he could have never have made it without their help. And that was a, a, a humility thing, because Stu was always, he was always very proud of being able to do things himself. And when his body broke down, he had to get help. And that was, he said, God taught me humility by just being able to ask for help. So can you come scratch my head? I have an itch. You know, can mm -hmm. you straighten me up in my chair? I can't move. Mm -hmm. You know, can you feed me? And I would imagine that itself drew people as he became more dependent, just to, so they wanted to help him and things. And what was his preaching like? Unpredictable. <laughs> <laughs> so I know I'd had him at the parish I was at. I would have him come and do some things, and you never know what Stu was going to get. Uh, yeah. The two I remember, and this is just what I remember. He did one homily on Michael Douglas's Black Rain, the movie, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, Stu, <laughs> I was like, are you really going to do this?" And, he went through about like how these characters change or whatever. Yeah. The other one I remember was he uh, he sang the chorus to "It's a Marshmallow World" mm. um, during the season of Advent, and he and he had a horrible singing voice, and everyone was just cringing and like, has he lost his mind? And he's gone <laughs> crazy, and he says, "You're marshmallow people, and let me tell you how we're going to come to God." And so uh, it's just like he just broke the mold. Yeah, and his message about suffering, you know, that he said. You know, to see suffering as a gift, the cross as a gift, don't ask for an easy life, but for the grace to persevere. How did that mes message resonate with people? Profoundly, mm -hmm. because they'd come in with their complaints, and if Stu didn't think they were justified, he'd just say, what are you complaining about? He goes, look at me, and I'm doing this out of love, because I believe God will get you through it. Stop complaining and get busy. Yeah, and do you feel his intercession today? Oh, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. I've... Uh, I mean, I've been using his intercession. At first, I was a little reticent because you're like, he's my buddy and my mm -hmm. friend. I'm like, you know, it's, am I doing the right thing asking for Stu's intercession? I mean, he was kind of a wild card. And right. I don't know where he is in terms of status with the hi hierarchy of heaven. But uh, I just, it just kept coming to me. It just kept yeah. coming to me. Yeah. Ask for my intercession. Yeah. I want to help. I want to do things. I'm in a position that I can't help. And we actually did have a conversation before he died several times about heaven. And he would always like, I'm going to be in purgatory till the end of time. And I said, Stu, no, you're not. I said, you've done a lot of it here. Yeah, so stop yeah, saying that. Yeah. I said, you might go to purgatory, but there'll be an end. And when there's an end, there's a heaven. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this mm -hmm. and you've thought about this. And so when you get there, I need your help. And he said, if I get there, I promise I will help you. He told me those words. And so I'm, it's, you know, and now I'm really encouraging people to ask for his intercession. Yeah. I encourage Mark Wahlberg to, and he yeah. started doing it. So, Well, thank you, Father, so much You're for welcome. talking to us. Yeah. After he was diagnosed, after the seminary had told him that they weren't going to recommend him for priestly ordination. Uh, he was really down and a group of people uh, organized a pilgrimage to Lourdes, France, where uh, of course the Blessed Mother appeared to Saint Bernadette. And when that was organized and Stu had said, yeah, let's, I, I want to go, he really thought that was God's way of telling him that he would receive a healing. And before he left, he goes, I'm going to go to Lourdes and be healed. And I was, you know, it's like, well, you're really pretty sure of that. And so when Stu got to France and when he went into the waters, the first time he thought he would come up out of the waters and just be able to walk again. He was on crutches at the time. And uh, when he came out of the water, he almost fell back into them because his body had not been healed. And in that moment, he felt such despair 
and abandonment. He was really angry uh, and despondent. He said, you know, this call to be a priest and I'm so close and my body's failing me and now I won't be able to do this. Why did this happen? And uh, a friend of his, uh, Father Killian McCaffrey, uh, was on the pilgrimage and said, you know, a lot of people went to a lot of work to bring you to France. And once you go back into the waters and give the Blessed Mother a second chance. And so he agreed. And uh, a day or two later, he went back into the waters and he said, when I came up, I did not receive a physical healing, but I received this healing of peace and surrender that I knew that God loved me and that God was watching out for me. And I wasn't angry, I wasn't upset. And I just had the supernatural grace of trust in God's plan for me. And a few days later on their way back, they went to Paris and uh, took a tour of Notre Dame Cathedral. And Stu was going around with another person and kind of looking at the statues, praying, giving a little history. He was a good historian. And uh, when they got to a statue of St. Joan of Arc, he didn't recognize her. He knew about St. Joan of Arc, but he didn't recognize her and, and said out loud, well, who is this young boy when he looked at the statue? And uh, a French woman was next to him, whispered in his ear, that's St. Joan of Arc. And uh, Stu uh, looked at the statue and began to talk about her. And then he said in an instant, it was the strangest thing. He said, I was kind of taken out of my body and he said, the only way I knew that that had happened was all the pain in my body went away. You know, when we live in our bodies, we get used to the little aches and pains. And he said, the pain in my disease for a moment went away. And I was keenly aware of St. Joan of Arc's presence and an invitation. And it's not like they had a conversation, but he, he was being communicated to on another level. And he said, St. Joan invited me to, to share in the sufferings of Christ. And would I be willing to uh, carry my diseases across as she carried the flag for France and the flag for Christ and gave up her life? Would you be willing to give up your life, Stuart Long? And Stu said yes. And he said, when I kind of came to, tears were coming down my face. I didn't know what had happened. And uh, so when he got back to Helena, uh, quickly he met with Bishop Thomas, who gave him the good news that, that uh, Bishop Thomas, after prayer and really entreating Our Lady about what to do with uh, Stuart, that he would ordain him to the priesthood. And so it was a tremendous grace uh, that happened on December 14, 2007. The two of us were ordained together. And you see this fulfillment of these things in Stu's life. And Stu was very close to Our Lady and uh, always thought that uh, she was close to him. And even in his sufferings, uh, he always advocated for intercession with the saints. He felt like they were always close to him and advocated despite your sufferings or your fears um, to go forward and, and not be afraid that Jesus would join you in your sufferings, whatever they are. And it inspired so many people. And it was a beautiful, really miracle of God to see how the Lord worked in his priesthood and in his life, despite his own sufferings and his failing body. And we speak of the priesthood, uh, the priest as a priest and victim. He offers a sacrifice and mm -hmm. he especially united with Christ in his sufferings. And as a brother priest, do you see that a special fruitfulness to his sufferings offered up as a priest? Yeah, when you saw, saw Stu celebrate Mass, the first thing you thought was, this is more of a victim than anything else, because uh, it was like watching a crucifixion as he celebrated. And so he brought Jesus and his suffering so close to people as he celebrated Mass, and as he really struggled to do Mass very reverently and very prayerfully, um, people could see both Jesus as the high priest and as the priest in Stu, and also as the victim in Stu. It was really phenomenal. Mm -hmm. People were really drawn into faith just by watching him celebrate Mass. Now I went to Helena, Montana for the premiere of this film. That's where we did these interviews. I met Father Bart Tollison, and uh, I was so impressed by the community. People that were brought to deeper faith through Father Bart. I, I mean, through Father Stu, I, I met a woman that was away from the church 40 years, went uh -huh. to one of his masses, was so moved by his reverence at mass. And despite his physical limitations and difficulties, she came back to the faith. You know, I met families, whole families that were touched by him. You know, brother priest and Father Bart was one of those. Um, it was just a, a beautiful celebration of faith in his life. And, um, and I guess... That's what struck me as a priest. You know, sometimes we think we've got to do all this stuff to have a successful ministry. 
Uh, he had a he carried his cross mm -hmm. well and had this fruitful ministry. Yeah. Despite in the great physical limitations. Yeah. I think too his humility. You know, there that's something that's very hard to put into words. You know, especially from his previous life. Right. You know, and to where God led him. But he became approachable. Mm -hmm. He's relatable. You know, he's a brother. And I think you see that. Not just a brother, but also a father figure. Right. right. You know, he, he's there to listen. Right. He's there to absolve you from your sins. He's there to pray for you. And that's very powerful, especially yeah. with him and his sufferings. And that bore a lot of fruit in his life. Mm -hmm. Like you just said, a lady had been away from the faith for 40 years. It's not an easy comeback. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So we also have an interview with uh, Father Stu's actual father, so we hope you enjoy that. Well, Mr. Long, I wanted to ask you about, uh, what about your son's journey, his story that inspired you, that touched you the most? Mostly his relentless dedication. I mean, he had a mission that he wanted to accomplish and he never wavered. Yeah. Did you teach him that growing up? <clears throat> mm, I would say not. <laughs> His mother raised, I was gone working most of the time, and Kathleen r really raised the kids. Mm -hmm. And he got most of his values, I think, from Kathleen. Mm -hmm. But one of the most, I think the most beautiful, one of the most beautiful elements of the story is <clears throat> like your reconciliation, and you're coming back into his life in a more profound way. <laughs> And really serving him. I mean, that, I always say that's real Christianity, you know, to really well, help somebody. Well, he, he needed help. <clears throat> Actually, at the end, the final part, when he was placed in Anaconda, I was working with the Habitat for Humanity. We had uh, one day a week that a bunch of old retirees worked on Wednesday. We were working on a house and. Stu called and said, what's the matter? And he said, I'm stuck, I can't get up. He was on the toilet and couldn't, couldn't get off by himself, so I had to drive 70 miles over to Anaconda and get him. <laughs> right. And I just basically stayed with him from that point on. And mm -hmm. I would help him whenever he needed help, and get him where he had to be. And right. And how was that for you personally, in terms of helping you to grow and grow closer to, to the Lord? I, it was just something that we needed to do, right. and we did it together. Yeah. Like Deanna said, we were a team. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Was there any particular thing he would tell you that struck you as profound or moved you? Mm. I don't know, we were laughing earlier today. We basically communicated in, in movie quotes. So we were talking <laughs> all the time. You know? <laughs> I, uh, the movie portrays the very, you all have a, a lively sense of humor together. And you could tell a deep kind of friendship there, even with whatever difficulties there were. We got pretty close. Yeah. What was it like for you to see him ordained? I was real happy for him. I, he had some trouble and they were not gonna ordain him at one point in time. Mm -hmm. Bishop Thomas said, well, I, you people have to do what you have to do. It's my intention when I get him back to hell now, I'm gonna ordain him and he did. And I think that really really made all of Stewart's work to that point worthwhile because he had achieved a goal that he had set. Right. I know one thing that moves me so much as a priest to, to see the fruitfulness of his ministry with the struggles with his disease, how people would come and line up to talk to him, to go to confession. Yeah, there was almost always somebody waiting to get into his room to see him in the nursing home there when he was in there. He was in the nursing home for four years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, He always had people to see him. Mm -hmm. 
if he had a quiet time, sometimes the hospital would call and he'd get on his wheelchair. The, a couple in Anaconda had given him a motorized wheelchair that he got around in. And that really made him able to do what he, what he did and what he needed to do. And he just, the girls would get him dressed and he'd buzz over to the hospital and right. see whoever had asked for him. Can you speak of that you becoming Catholic helped him to like to let go? Tell us about that. Well, I, he was always not really demanding that we enter the church, but asking us if we wouldn't consider it. And I said that at some point in time, I probably would, and if I did, I would be serious about it. I wouldn't do it just because. And we both decided that we wanted to do it. We went through RCIA, and when we were, when Kathleen was baptized and we were confirmed in the faith, then he's like, I got my job done. Yeah, it's not long after that he passed away, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well. Easter time till he passed away the 9th of June. Right, right. So it was like, what, a month and a half or something? Right, right. Yeah. Did he tell you anything about that or that what it meant to him? Or? No, he just said he was glad that we did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no nonsense, right? <laughs> Looking back on it all, oh, you've had a lot of loss in your life. Uh, losing children and your own journey. <clears throat> Is there something from Father Stu's witness that helped you in your relationship with God and dealing with that loss? Well, I, I imagine he, you just keep plugging away and do what you have to do, you know. And mm -hmm. Whatever it is, you have to meet the challenge. Right. That is such a part of his witness is, yeah, human effort and God's help together. And that's always a mystery to me, but. Uh, well, and, and we have to suffer. Yeah, that was one thing he said, we all have to suffer. Right. And he did, and with grace and with strength. And I think that's one thing that really met with other people at they make would make that connection. If he can do it, I can do it. Right. I agree. That that touched me about the film. So. Well, Mr. Long, thank you so much for speaking with us. <coughs> it's my pleasure. Well, Amy, thank you so much for talking with us. And uh, you're the younger sister of Father Stu, about seven, eight years. And, uh, yes. I know sometimes I think of my relatives and things that they endured and went through and mm -hmm. it inspires me today. Yeah. Is there something like that? Every day I wake up and I can get out of bed on my own. Yeah. And I can hear, I can see, I can, it's, I think of him every morning, mm -hmm. every morning, because he couldn't do a lot of those things. He couldn't yeah. get up or get out on his own and just the fact that I'm able to do just that, just mm -hmm. that, wake up every morning, I'm so grateful. And I think of him, and that's kind of how I start my day. Right. I think of what good can I do today, right. you know. So I, I try and do that as much as possible every day, something a little better than the day before. Right. He had that effect on everybody. <laughs> 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 he really did. Yeah. And so every day when I wake up, I want to be a better person mm -hmm. because of Stu. Mm. Well, thank you so much. For oh, you bet. Right. You bet. I got to speak with Father Stu's father and his sister, and uh, I was uh, touched by their humility. Mm -hmm. you know, his, his dad said, this is about Father Stu. It's a film about him. You know, a film can't capture everything, show everything, but I, I love that theme in the movie about their growing closer together. Yeah. His father really was a true servant, and living with him in the parish, and then also you know, serving him in the, in the nursing home. Beautiful, you know, deep friendship bond that they had that I think images, you know, our relationship with God, that, mm -hmm. that fatherly relationship in a special way is a powerful 
image of conversion yeah. and growing closer to the Lord. I think always an interesting question is, how do people come to faith? How do you come, people just come to believe in Christ? You know, especially with all everything that's out there, and it's easy to get caught up on this and that, and you know, you see it in the film. Right. <laughs> but just that growing, but it's not just an individual growing, but it's a community growing. Right. All closer to the Lord. And I think that even the sacrifices that the Father made on the behalf of the Son, you know, that is very powerful. You know, there's a silent witness there. Yeah. Almost like a St. Joseph there. Mm -hmm. Just kind of working behind the scenes, mm -hmm. you know, that he's, you know, he's giving a service for an old, another soul, basically, to give a, you know, a great work of God. Mm -hmm. We also have some uh, interviews with some of Father Stu's brother priests. So we hope you enjoy those. Now, you knew Father Stu well. And you were telling me about, you were actually his vocation director when he entered, right? Right. And you saw something about the power of his priesthood. Could you tell us about yeah. that? Yeah. Well, especially as he, uh, as he got more infirm, it wasn't that his uh, powers diminished. They actually increased, um, his spiritual powers especially. So there was a real experience of our Lord um, flowing through him to heal souls and to touch people and to transform their lives. And especially at the, um, at the Mass. I always felt like when I was with Father Stu at Mass, we were going to Calvary. And we know we do that anytime we come to Mass. But with him, it was almost incarnate, um, especially when he had difficulty holding up the host. Um, just the effort and the offering. Um, but he never, he never shied away from that. Um, he was on display, suffering. Um, but it was a beautiful gift. And I think everyone who experienced that had the power had the experience of seeing our Lord um, on the cross, actually right. on the cross. It was the right. cross. Right. And, um, of course, that's what saves the world. So it, there were great graces there. I know, like your priestly formation and everything, and you, know, you feel like you really got to come out polished and, mm -hmm. you know, have all these mm -hmm. edges taken mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. He doesn't seem that way to me. I never met him. Yeah. So how did he, how did he pull that together to use that in the priesthood? Yeah, so he was himself. Right, mm -hmm. he was himself, and 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 that's the thing, though. The Lord calls men um, not to be polished or perfect, right. but to be themselves. And, mm -hmm. and Father Stu embraced that, and I think the illness helped with that, honestly. Yeah. Be, uh, it was his nature to be himself. Um, he wasn't afraid of of uh, rubbing people maybe a little bit raw or right. or being bold in his statements. Mm -hmm. um, but that was a beautiful gift that he had too. I think people related to that, and especially mm -hmm. here in Montana, just simple heart with a great love for our Lord, and right. he spoke the truth. Right. Yeah. And uh, we all have wounds and struggles from our family of origin, so to speak, and like for him to overcome his, was that a big journey for him, or did he seem to kind of leap over that? No, it was a journey, yeah. uh, just like it is for everybody. Yeah. Those yeah. wounds go deep, mm -hmm. and it takes a while for the Lord to first gain access because oftentimes, especially as men, we defend ourselves mm -hmm. from those wounds. And, and Stu did that for many years, actually. And yeah. so he had to unlearn a lot of behavior. Right. Um, but as the Lord softened his heart and as he, he came to know more and more of the Father's love for him personally, then I think those wounds were, um, they weren't eliminated. Mm -hmm. uh, they were transformed. And, and, you know, just as we hear in Isaiah that by the wounds of of the suffering servant, we are healed by right. Christ's wounds. We're healed. Right. So too, Father Father Stu, his by his wounds, a lot of people were healed. As I said, I thoroughly enjoyed my time out in Helena, meeting the people, meeting the people that knew Father Stu, and hearing their witness, and their own change in their lives from his influence in them. You know, the movie was very moving to me. It, it, it really moved me, and I, mm -hmm. I really look for that in yeah. films. I, you know, I'm amazed to hear a Christian message in a Hollywood, major Hollywood film, you know, so I think that's good. You know, the, the, is the caveat, it's not for the whole family. It's not for young kids. Yeah. There's rough language, there's rough humor, but it's, it's a story of conversion. It's a story of a priest that did incredible work for the Lord and for yeah. the kingdom. I think a big takeaway too, you know, as I was watching it, is that it, it makes you reflect on many things, but also it makes you examine your own spiritual life quite a bit, you know, right. and it, it's a movie that does challenge us, you know, and it's, it's a movie that, you know, God, you know, those sufferings that God places in our lives, a lot of times we go, uh, mm -hmm. you know, but, 
you know, just that ability to accept, to be open to God, you know. Right. And that's because God can turn, you know, evil into good. Yeah. You know, he can raise the dead and restore it back to life. Yeah. You know, th there's a resurrection there. Right. And a lot of times we can lose sight of that. Yeah. So we'll send you into that vineyard with a blessing. May our Heavenly Father shine His face upon you. May He give you His peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We'll see you next week on Life on the Rock.